welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 201. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Kyle. Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Hey Kyle, how are you doing, man? I'm pretty good for a Saturday afternoon, and don't sneeze, don't, please don't. That, my nose, I can feel the tickling, it, I, it's, no, it, it's gone away, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, glad to know that you can control it. I know. The thing is, you know, did I ever mention I have very, very mild superpowers? Um, you did, but I don't remember on what. Well, I am able to occasionally stop sneezes. When I go into kitchens, I can actually sense where the knives and the forks are in any room. Hmm. And I'm also quite good when I'm, you know, when you're on a bicycle, right? And you've got to, and you're cycling and you know you're about to fall. Mm -hmm. I'm able to predict that and actually stop it i'm that good oh my goodness this is a superpower oh listen look i kid you not i would rival deadpool oh wow i, I I'm, I'm speechless i got no idea what to say oh just just enjoy being in my presence peasant <laughs> wow okay <laughs> much ego oh just much ego very 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 much ego hmm all right all right and our guest for this week is Sapphire Heart Song. Oh, please, peasant, you have nothing compared to me. I am the great and powerful Sapphire Heart Song anime Christie person. Now go get me chocolate milk. Chocolate milk? Oh, I'm sure we can organize a bit of chocolate milk. You see, look at this. Someone who can actually go after my own heart in terms of ego and power. I think we're going to get along very well, Sapphire. Oh, yes. In fact, actually, sweet no chocolate milk. Peasant, Norman, go get us some chocolate milk. <laughs> why, why me? Because you're because the peasant you're the and we're woman. royalty. I'm the one who has a shiny crystal throne. I'll put a link in later to show what I mean. <laughs> uh, of course, that's only in the Pokemon universe. <laughs> um, well, okay. I'll try Never and... Mind. <laughs> I'll try and go get the... Which we call this tr chocolate choc milk? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Sapphire, how are you doing? I'm doing very well this morning. Ah, uh, awesome! Yeah, we forgot to mention that we're recording in three different time zones. Yay! Yay! It's okay. It's okay. We all still love you, Norman, and stuff. We're just not where you are. And things. Well, okay. I'm in Asia. Kyle is in the UK. Well, let's consider Europe. And Sarah, you're in the States or the America. Yep. So yeah, three different time zones. All we need is, um, Aust no, not Australia. Australia is, well, kind of in the East. I don't know. Time zones. It's the time zones you're talking about there. Cause you mentioned Europe, America and, um, Asia. Are uh -huh. you, are you not meaning continents? Pro time zones, like, Stop confusing me. I'm Who already cares? Confused. Who cares? It's, it's, does it really does it, matter? It's different well, it kinds be. of the world. Well, you see, what I was thinking was, if we were aiming for continents, I know some um, penguins in Antarctica that we could interview that are, like, uh, really big MLP fans. Are you sure you're not talking about seagulls? Because I do know that they're seagulls. They're seagulls, but they're in Inverness where I am, and trust me, you don't want to get them on. They're just chavs. <laughs> uh... No, I'm just confused. But anyway, Sapphire, you're the guest for this week. How are you? How are yes. you? Yes. I'm doing very well. Also, scoot over, Kyle. It's my time. Go away. No. Uh, <laughs> no, don't go nice. away. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, no, I don't mind. I've, like, hey, look, if you want the throne all to yourself, you're more than welcome to have it, because I'll be taking it back at the end of the show. <laughs> wow, ego. Uh, like I, I said, like me him. He's funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, but... <laughs> oh, wow. I like him. He's silly. <laughs> All, All right. right. So, um, Sapphire, before we officially start the show, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is favorite character. Favorite character? Like, what do you mean by, like, favorite character? Like, favorite princess, well, main character, side the, character, what? <laughs> the, the official line was supposed to be favorite pony, but... um. 
if you pick a changeling yeah. or a draconicus, then there are no ponies. So this is much more open. You can see griffins, you can see whatever. So character. Favorite okay. character, it ranges in like different categories for me. Like my favorite princess is Celestia. My favorite of the main six is Rarity. My favorite character that only had one speaking line is Fleur de Wee. That's my waifu. Don't touch her. I will. F- That's not a word. I will kill you. That's not a word. Indeed. Oh shush. <laughs> but yeah, I have like different characters, and my favorite villain is of course um Chrysalis, mostly for aesthetic reasons, not uh. for like planning reasons. She sucks at that, as we all have come to know. I even have a plushie of Chrysalis. That's how much of a fan I am of her. <laughs> all right, then. Well, let's just say you have more than one. So, okay. Yeah. (laughs) Character is a good place to start. So, favorite episode? Favorite episode? Uh, I have a bunch of different favorite episodes. Like, my first episode was Dog and Pony Show, which got me kind of hooked on the show anyway. Of course, that was when my father thought I was watching um, Lucid Things. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. I'll tell that story later for, you know, the All other right. question. But favorite episode, it kind of varies. Like, I don't really have a favorite episode. Although, I will say I enjoyed, like, I don't know, main attraction. I enjoyed, well, as you know, Norman, I enjoyed um Hooffields and McColt's. I think I enjoyed Games Ponies Play as much of a mess of an episode that was, because we got to revisit Crystal Empire. Um, yeah, a bunch of different episodes. Mm, all right, all right. So the next question is, um, how did you become a fan of the show? Well, it's kind of funny, because I didn't really get into the show until, like, I was a freshman in high school. Mm. And during, like, the later times was when My Little Pony was starting, getting, starting to get popular. I am currently a college student, so this was, like, four years ago, maybe? Like, back in um, 2011, 2012. All my friends who were anime friends, this was kind of where Anime Christie came from, like, before ponies. Uh, they were sitting around at a lunch table on a computer watching the first episode of My Little Pony. And then there's me, who's like, what the heck are you guys watching? Oh, we're watching My Little Pony. Seriously? What? I just kind of ignored it, but then, like, as the show started getting more popular within that group I was in, I kind of, like, didn't, like, see much of it. Like, I didn't really, like, hate on them to... I didn't, like, pressure them to stop watching it or anything. I thought it was cool that they were watching it. I didn't care. But at the same time, as the show got more popular, there was more exposure. And then one day, like, three months later, during the summer, I had realized, oh, I had the Hub Network. (laughs) How did you not know that you had the Hub? Because I was stuck watching South Park and Cartoon Network. Well, South Park is on Comedy Central, so, okay. Well, during that time period, I was into, like, profanity and whatnot. Uh, I was... I don't... I didn't really go to the Hub Network. I knew it was there, but as I was, like, scrolling around the TV Guide looking for something to watch, I suddenly saw um, My Little Pony was coming on. (laughs) Then I thought, okay, let's see what this is about. So I turned it on. Well, at the same time, my dad was getting ready for work and whatnot, and he was, like, downstairs doing, like, some normal routines that he would do, like, before he went go to work. Like, he'd exercise, take a shower, all that fun stuff. So when he was coming back upstairs, and I had, like, immediately turned off the TV and had, like, this petrified look on my face. Okay. He basically looked at me and asked if I was watching. Can I please say it without you censoring? Say it, say it. 
He thought I was watching porn. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I've got to be honest, sometimes I do wonder which would be easier to explain to the parents. Because it's like, I've had that conversation where I've actually had to explain to my parents the fact that I like my little pony and, um, and I do these shows and, you know, and my friends are into it. And it's, I had to actually say to my dad, without blushing, the fact that the names of the ponies were Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> Flutter shy, and then I had to eventually get to Pinkie Pie, which I had to leave to last because I knew I was just going to burst out laughing in the moment I said it. Because <laughs> my poor I dad know. is, my poor dad corpsing in the chair at the other end, knowing that he's dragging me through the gutter right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's basically what happened. Although when I turned it back on, he like stared at me awkwardly, and then I stared back and just went. Shut up! This is what my friends like! <laughs> <laughs> but it's strange, like, you're, you're a girl, and you're watching My Little Pony, so that should be normal. Why, why is it not? Well, my dad kind of pressures me to grow up a bit. Like, even now he'll, like, complain that I watch a little girl show. Yeah, but you'll have a Patreon, so... Well, I have cash. a Patreon, but no one... No one gives me cash oh. on Patreon. Right. right, that's what we have to organize. We listen. <laughs> I have maintained this through ever since Norman's had me on the show. I've maintained that the NB show gets things done. We have had all sorts of cool things happen over the last couple of weeks, haven't we, Norman? Yeah, but I'm yeah. not sure that this is well. Anyway, continue on. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do get paid in commissions because I am a very good artist, apparently. <laughs> See, there's like, that too. just yesterday I was paid $200 because my um tablet had crapped out on me and I was opening up like limited commissions to wear when my new tablet came in. And then suddenly 200 bucks has been dropped on me with all five slots filled in <laughs> one day. Oh, so wow. that's cool. I know, I felt so happy. Mostly because... I got what I earned in five months in one day. <laughs> oh, oh, that's wow. good. Yay! I'm halfway to BronyCon! Yay. Okay. Yay! So, Moving on. So, there, that's how you became a fan of the show. So, now the last one. This is going to be interesting. Um, what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? Well, let's start with my parents. My dad is sort of on and off with it. Like, he thinks it's just going to be a hobby that I'll get through and phase out of eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been four years. Same thing with my mom. Mm -hmm. But my mom really doesn't care. She's more supportive of the fact that I like my little pony. Especially my grandmother, because I had shown her, like, the show at one point. Her favorite is Pinkie Pie. <laughs> okay. She, like, when I first got into, like, My Little Pony, this was, like, when I really started getting into it in, like, sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as Gorillas, the, you know, the... Band? Animated band, yeah. Oh, yeah, huh? She had bought me, like, the main six in, like, the uh, Hasbro doll forms. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You mean well, Equestria Girls? No, no, no. Oh. God, no. This was before Equestria Girls. Like, this was once, this was before season three even started because, well, I think, uh, season three started in October of that year. Anyway, um, it was the brushable dolls, like, that they have, mm -hmm. like the tiny ponies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what she got me because she was, well, more or less supportive of the show. Then again, I made her watch Ticketmaster. <laughs> <laughs> what did she think? She liked it. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, my grandma isn't a critic like me. <laughs> <laughs> then again, before I discovered the analysis community, I was just enjoying the episode just for the show. <laughs> oh, no. We did meet you think about the show. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was during, like, um... You know, before, like, season three mm -hmm, ended. Or... Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think that's all I can really say for, like, what my family and friends think. Because I don't have friends outside of this thing anymore. What? What happened? 
Well, high school happened, and during high school, nobody really cared. Like, there were a couple of people who were like, ugh, she's a brownie. Ugh. <laughs> All right. Although I have had, like, some YouTube conflicts or whatever about how somebody said, I can't be a brownie because I'm a girl. Oh, God. All right. I know. It was a huge flame whore. Poor Robin uh. 0928 got in on it. Uh, 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 poor Robin. Well, I have to say something about that. That's just dumb. Okay. Yes, yes it is. Just dumb. Like, yeah, I mean, labels are like, labels. Like, I tried to go all love and tolerate on it. Like, you know what? I don't care if that's what you think, but don't try to label me as such. And then he kept, like, say he called me a friggin' social justice warrior over it. If it were me, I would just say, all right, cool. I mean, you say whatever you want, I say whatever I like, want. He like, he says I had to be a Pegasus because I'm a girl. Labels are just labels. doesn't really mean anything. To me, Brony is an adult fan of the show My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Uh. <laughs> How about we move on before it oh, gets yeah, into yeah, yeah. a so... drama <laughs> play more? I don't know. I mean, it'll, it'll be interesting if we do get that, like, mm. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. anyway, so that's high school probably, but um, college? None? Uh, college? I hate it. I oh. have to do homework. Um, because during oh. high school, I didn't really have much homework. But now I have to read textbooks, I have to do homework, and I can't do it at last minute or else bad grades happen. <laughs> uh, do you uh. have student loans? No. Oh, okay. Well, I think I should, but <laughs> I don't know where to find them. I'll have to pay them eventually when I get out of college. I just started. Okay. Make sure you deal with that. Hey, you started college. Yes. That's the same thing as Ty and Dega. Well, yeah. Ty and I are around the same age. Oh, ah, all right. Except he's a deer. Although, well... <laughs> Well, the funny thing about, like, me and my age when it comes to, like, school is that, to be honest, at my age, I should be a senior in high school about now. That means you're smarter than the rest. Well, actually, no, that's not the case either. Well, I am smart and I am intelligent, but the thing is, back during kindergarten, my parents had planned on putting me in there early so, like, they could deal with some... Like, my mother worked the night shift and she needed me to be in, like, kindergarten for a year or so. Mm, all right. But because I was, I caught up with the learning process, like, at the same time as the other kids did, I was not held back like my brother was. So I had ended up going a year early and then had to go through, um... You know, my yeah. whole entire school life without skipping any grades or, yeah, all, you know. Yeah, all that good stuff, all that good stuff. All right, that's cool, that's cool. So, uh, I, I think that's about the four important questions that we can ask. This is kind of strange because the last time when we had a reviewer on show, he ended up being cast on another show we have. So, that's going to be interesting. Oh? <laughs> yeah. Um, Ty? Oh Ty no, sorry, or... not not that guy. The other guy, you know, the pigeon. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. The pigeon. Oy. Yeah. I forgot that we had tie on. Huh, okay. That's you forgot speech. that we had tie on. Oh, for goodness' sake! I kind Even of... he remembered he was on. I do remember him. I he he's... picked it from my show. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, I remember that one too. We love you, Ty and Taga. Ty, you're doing, we love you, hope the studying's going well. Uh, yeah, from the MBS, good luck. And, you know, uh, Ty and Taga is my pet though. Oh. Although Silver Cole's my next goal. <laughs> I, there's a gag with me, like, I own all the non-Pony OC pets <laughs> that I like. Like, I own Ty and Taga, I know, I own... Cat Avenger, I own Manga Common, Silver Quill's my next goal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting battle. All right, Ethan. So we've been talking a lot about the reviewing community, and by now people have already guessed that probably you're a reviewer on the YouTubes? Yes, I am. I'm also a artist. 
but I mostly prefer doing the art over the review, even though the review is what I got famous for doing for in the first place. <laughs> so how did the whole process came along? Like, what got you into reviewing? Like, drawing is one thing, like, hey, I want to draw, so I draw. But well, reviewing yeah. is something else. Basically, I discovered reviewing and whatnot, like... It was this, um, Digibrony, like, video that, like, discussed, like, the princesses. This was when season three had just ended. And this was back when I had a computer. Well, I didn't really pay much attention to that video, but I ended up coming back to it when I was bored and browsing around YouTube on my 3DS oh, wow. one day and came across it and then decided to actually listen to the review. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, and then I started binge-watching Digi. And then, eventually, I had gotten to, like, one of his other reviews of the fan-made content, and then he had recommended to go see Tommy Oliver and, uh, Anthony C's collab. So, I had to look it up, and then I found it, and I just was blown away, especially at that last quote. The greatest trick the devil lover pulled was pretending that she was never there in the first place. And like that, she's gone. That made my jaw drop because of how suspenseful that is. That was. It was too amazing. <laughs> so I started binge watching did I started binge watching Tommy and a bunch of other different people. But the thing that I had came across eventually was the I Love Kim Possible a lot animation. This eventually led me to, like, Mad Munchkin, Storm Analysis. I started getting interested in all these videos. And I was like, holy crap, I want to see more. <clears throat> of course, I didn't really know who Silverquill was until, like, later on. I think this was when... Um, like, when he was just getting started, like, I was still in the Digi Tommy stage, and during Digi's Bat video, he had recommended Silverquill. Well, I didn't have annotations on my 3DS, so I no. kind of ignored it. No. And plus, I didn't like Power Rangers, so... <laughs> All right, Eden. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really didn't discover both, um... Silverquill and Josh Scorcher until they had their Pinky Pride review, which I clicked on for some reason. And then I thought, holy crap, this guy is funny. Then I binge-watched him. I, when I, like, when I find reviewers and whatnot, I like to binge-watch their content. Like, get to know who they are stylistically. So it's a good sign if I'm binge-watching your content. All right, Eden. So that's how you kind of discovered Silver. I I'm getting a pattern here where you didn't really know Silver. Now you know him. Well, I don't really know Silver. Although I forgot to tell you like how I got into reviewing. I just told you like the origin story uh. of how I discovered it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So basically later on I got like my computer back like in a summer. Mm -hmm. And then I started like doing drawings and whatnot because... I was um, still into anime. I didn't really, like, take an interest, but I had been learning, like, video editing during a year in high school. So I really got into video editing, and I enjoyed it. I ended up getting an A because I enjoyed it so much. But I didn't really have ponies in my agenda. I think the first pony-made content I ever made was, like, a, um, like an AMV Based on a song that my ex-boyfriend, um, showed me. But later on, like, during my senior year, I thought, you know what, if I'm going to enjoy this content, if I want to meet these people, it's now or never. So I ended up meeting, I ended up making my first video, because I thought, you know what, I could do this too. However, the point where I got somewhat recognition was when I did my Bats video. I mean, I had remembered, like, I had sent a note to Silver Quill, like, hey, saying, like, can you check out my channel? Can you critique anything? Is there anything I could do to get better? Yeah, a month later, I woke up with at least 
over 200 subscribers opposed to like 70 or 40 and then I got famous and then <laughs> <laughs> and it's all because of a real life event from where a bat was in my room on the day that the episode bats appeared <laughs> And that's the end of my story. Uh, I think this is one story that the listeners need to watch. I'll put it in a link to your YouTube channel and they can yeah. look for it. Like, this is interesting. Yeah. And said video has already gotten 11k 11, views. 000, yeah. 11,000 views, yeah. But that was back when I was like first starting out, like Silver Quill had commented on the video, he liked it, and then he subscribed to me. Okay, Pigeon, if you are watching this, what the heck is wrong with you and why are you still subscribed to me? <laughs> I think you can tell uh, that yourself I'm too. I'm going to ask him that personally during the, um, like, beforehand, if that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, that's how you became, well, a reviewer. Just, you wanted to join in the community, just jump in and have fun. I did have fun. I enjoyed the video making process, although it was stressful when my father was yelling at me, like, what the heck are you doing? Why are you doing this? This is a waste of time. You're not getting a job out of this. So yeah. he thinks. <laughs> uh, alrighty then. So, how, how does the process go? Like, from, well, can you just tell us the process? The process goes from script to... Preparing to the editing and then send. But if you want the full detailed version, I'll give it to you. So basically, I would watch an episode and then I'd get like this idea or a joke centered around in my head. Like you get those things that everybody says but nobody really thinks about. Or there are some aspects that not a lot of people think when they see this part. Or there's a counter defense I'd like to make to this one part. So if I get that high drive of wanting to explain that drive or that reason and whatnot, I will write down the script. But I don't do complete episodic reviews. This is when I feel like it. Hmm, so most of the time, because I'm looking at your YouTube page and you have bats on. And then the next one is um, Pony Discussion Tanner... Princess Luna. So, oh. Yeah, I'm not a Luna fan. Let's just say at the end of the video, I get burned to the stick because of that. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Anyway, um, it goes like that. I start writing and scripting and then I go over it because when I have to write down a script, I really have to think. Because if I just go in without thinking about anything, I sound absolutely stupid. It's a big weakness of mine. Like, if you put me on the spot. But then the video editing will come, and I'll, like, do some of the audio editing in the uh, video. But I like to make the art and whatnot first. Hmm. Like with my, um, like with my review on the cutie remark, I had, um, drawn out everything first, like... Storyboards and whatnot, right? Well, I didn't, like, storyboard it. I drew all the backgrounds first because I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I had... Of course, it was also a bit of do it on the spot, like with the um, animation for like me jumping off the train. I did that while I was in the middle of editing. I had sketched out all the poses and whatnot, and then I just drew it all out and rolled with it from there. Hmm. So from what I'm hearing is mostly you shoot from the hip with your reviews? What do you mean by that? Like, you have a base idea of what you want to do, you do it, and then in post, oh, this would be funny, so I'll already record it, and then I'll just do something. Yeah. Like, there was a part, like, during the, um, you know, that same review, like, like, you remember the part where, like, Erica, like, the, um, giant wolf girl? Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. 
Remember her? Like, you know how I'm going like, ee, ee, yay. I did not originally have that in the script. So I thought, okay, maybe if I'm, like, struggling and the audience sees I'm kind of struggling as I wiggle my arms, it would be funnier. <laughs> Yeah. Apparently it was. Yeah. Also, I had to change some lines, like, during, um, the Silver Quill part, like, um... Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> like, when I was running away, I was originally going to say something like, I never thought I'd say this, but stay away from me! <laughs> but I couldn't get the line right. So I ended up going like, Silver scares me! <laughs> Much better, though. Yeah. Same thing with, like, the ending part, like, when Silver was, like, um, like, coming to my channel to, like, wake me up or whatever. Originally, I was going to have him shaking me, but I didn't feel like it. <laughs> that, and I was originally going to, like, have something else and start, instead of, like, um, are you going to kidnap me? If so, <laughs> it'll likely result in Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Although, I, now that I think about it, that's, like, one of the creepiest things I've ever said. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, glad that you didn't put it on your channel. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of improv because I couldn't get, like, lines right. That's how this show works, by the way. Like, we shoot from the hip most of the time, and if it hits, it hits. Yeah. <laughs> And I also see that you just recently reached um, 2,500 views. Uh, 25,000 subscribers, yeah. yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm actually, I'm pretty sure by the end of this week, I'll be at 2,600. Oh, let's hope so. Because that's how Ooh. awesome I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's hope so. Let's hope so. Uh, uh, let's see. Mm, what are your thoughts about Manhattan? Like, the city of Manhattan, or, like, Rarity takes Manhattan? The city in the Pony Universe. My thoughts on Manhattan. That is a good question. They're jerks! <laughs> I went to punch a lot of them in the face because common sense and stuff. Because I don't really have a general opinion of Manhattan, although I do... Agree that the ponies there are absolute jerks. Like, is it really too much for you to just not be in? That's not a word. Although maybe it depicts uh, New York City perfectly. I don't <laughs> know. I've never been. I don't know. I've never been to uh, New York, so I don't know. Well, you're going to Ronicon soon, so you're going to go to Baltimore. So that's cool. Well, Baltimore isn't in New York. It's going to be in New York State? Maryland. Oh, no. Maryland. Oh, okay. Shows me what I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You're not from America, so I forgive you. <laughs> uh, but talking about Manhattan, uh, it seems that we might be getting more of Manhattan in Season 6. Oh, God. <laughs> so, <laughs> you said you wanted to punch someone, right? So, get a script ready for season six. Uh, do I have to? I have commissions, <laughs> and I have to get to Brown and Con and stuff. Probably, but... Uh... Oh, listen, if, if, you, if you don't spend <laughs> some time on it, you know, I mean, you're, you're on your throne, you've got things to do, you're far too important to write little scripts all the time. I'm yeah. sure possibly we could arrange something to help you out. I'm sure there must be a writer somewhere, <laughs> perhaps on this show, perhaps called, um, I don't know, Midnight Scribe, who might be able to help, I'm not sure. Norman, do you know anyone? No, I have no idea, man. Al, you scare me. <laughs> and also, I write my own stuff, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no! Um. <clears throat> But anyway, uh, the My Little Pony Facebook page uh, teased about Manhattan being in season six and stuff. So, oh yeah, I saw, yeah. I saw waiting. Yeah, sadly. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. Let's see how it goes because Manhattan is an interesting place, and seeing more of it is going to be interesting. Oh yes. <laughs> I personally don't like Manhattan that much aesthetically. I prefer the Crystal Empire, but that's only because it's shiny. I want to see more of the Griffin Kingdom, like see what happened after they, well, 
they got it back. Like, will this I have be... my own personal griffin pet, so I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Well, yeah, manga common. Yeah. I do have an explicit photo of him carrying me in bridal style. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's going to be a word. <laughs> oh, bye. So, like you mentioned before, you also do drawing. So, what's the tool of the trade? Well, tablet-wise, when I was going to, like, ask for, like, tablets and whatnot, and I'm still sad that this was broken, I went to Mad Munchkin, because I respect her opinion as an artist. <clears throat> I had originally gotten a Parex 302 processing tab. It's a good tablet, especially since it doesn't break the bank, and it has, like, a lot of workspace on it. It had 2,000... Um, and 48, uh, pressure sensitivity, so that was nice, and it had, like, a good workspace. But now that's gone, so I got the upgraded version with less space. But at least it comes with hotkeys. That's what I use for, like, tablet-wise, although I'm kind of glad I did get it, because that tablet's wiring has been, like, messed up lately, so I'd have to, like thumble with the wiring like a TV antenna in order to <laughs> work with it while well, I'm getting this new tablet. But the main program I use to draw and such is Autodesk Sketchbook Pro 7. Oh, huh, that is a rare one. i never heard of that one before. Well, it's a good program. It was one of those other programs that was kind of like Photoshop, but it didn't break the bank. Like, you know how, like, Photoshop can be, like, $200 for, like, the latest version? And that's just only the license. Yeah. This was, like, 40 50 bucks when I got it. Huh, okay. And it's a very good program. You've seen my artwork, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can tell it's a good program, especially since I use it. I don't even remember the program that you use, but from the sounds of it, it's one of those rare applications that not many people use. So that's good to know. Well, there was a point on, like, DeviantArt when Autodesk had, like, a uh, contest, like, with um the program. It's not that rare. I'm, I remember, like, Tommy Oliver talking about, like, the free version at one point on his channel, like, Rebel Pixels. Mm. You know, things like that. I'm still a subscriber of Rebel Pixels. Oh god, I remember when I first got the program and I first started, like, using it and whatnot. Mad Munchkin and Ty and Daga were laughing at me <laughs> for using that program. Uh, why? What happened? What did they laugh? What, why? Because I wasn't using friggin' um, Photoshop. I didn't use Paint Tool Sci. I don't use Inkscape. Because I didn't use any of those programs, they laughed at me. <laughs> I remember being in a call drawing, and then suddenly, they're laughing at me. Like, why? What did I do? Those Ugh. memes. But look who's laughing yeah. now. <laughs> I, do, I do love Maddie. She is a total sweetheart. She loves to call me Han. I love Maddie. <laughs> uh, don't we all? Yes. I see that you have a lot of, well collabs with other artists or with other reviewers how does yeah. that work well when it comes to collabs it's a bit of a it's i've learned over the years that you just can't collab with anybody like my first collab is my least favorite like i hated doing the editing i enjoyed the episode but i hated the collab itself. I hated working with the people that I did because, like, the one girl couldn't get her... Well, she got her lines into me, but because she doesn't do her own poses and she had somebody else doing them, I had to draw them myself, and I wasn't that good at making um other people's poses back then, and I had a hard time doing, like, pony legs. When it comes to collabs and whatnot, uh, you have to at least like the person you're working with because I did not enjoy the process of the review. That was my worst review because I wanted to get it done. Of course, with Ty and Daga, I actually enjoyed 
making the review, I enjoyed making the video and whatnot. With Lightning Bliss, I enjoyed making the video. I've enjoyed all my other collabs since, because I like the people who I'm working with. Although, there are also some cases, like, not many people will say this, but I had a moment with Dr. Wolf. Oh, yeah? Like, before the um Monty Python thing came out. Well, there are different types of collaborators, but with Dr. Wolf, it was a... More or less like a business, Ooh. like, partnership. Like, when it comes to people like, you know, Lightning Bliss and Ty and Daga, it's fun. It's fun to do. But when it comes to, like, people like Dr. Wolf, it's, like, strict business. Like, after we had written out our script, we had gone into a call and basically reenacted how it would go. And then we would, like, stop to, like, fix my grammar or, like, ask each other's questions and fix each other's like um paragraphs because it's all scripted but it is like a real discussion hmm okay that's interesting because i do remember dr wolf's uh, a moment with and the doc is a nice person i'm not like saying it's all business although i do have a funny story about the actual call with dr wolf because i was nerve i was a nervous wreck during the time <laughs> Oh, God. And then the worst possible thing had happened. What was it? My dad had cut out the internet while I was in the middle of the call <laughs> with Dr. Wolf. Like, I freaked out so badly that I had um tried running downstairs and then I fell and sprained my leg. Oh. I know. It was so, it was so bad. <laughs> and it was before I was starting college. I'm seeing a pattern here. Like, seriously, I'm seeing a pattern. Because when I had Dr. Wolf on for, well, the thing I'm doing right now with you, it's, okay, we were doing it, we were recording and stuff. It was kind of cool, you know, just normal recording, talking to him, asking him about stuff. And then once it's done, the most worst possible thing happened. The whole recording was gone. Oh my god. Oof. That's, that's bad. Yep. Let's hope this recording isn't, like, gone. Oh, no. From that day on, I learned that you have to have backups for your backups. I'm using MP3 Skype recorder to record this. But at the same time, I'm recording on two separate tracks where you guys are recorded on one end and I'm recorded on another end. So if MP3 Skype recorder breaks down or derps somehow, I have the backup plan to go to. So, yeah, I'm right, kind of safe. <laughs> so from that day on, like... Ay, ay, ay. But still, Dr. Wolf was an awesome guy to, who said that, yeah, we can do this next week or another thing. So he yeah. was pretty awesome like that. Like The doc is awesome. Like, I remember um, when he and Lightning Bliss were, like, uh, coming up to me for, like, some commission work, like, before my tablet broke down. He and I had a lot of fun, like, um, with his one tile card that I cannot really say anything about. Mm -hmm. I think I showed you, Norman. I think you should know what I'm talking about. Oh, that was for... Oh, I thought that was just some art. Not tile? Okay, cool. No, no. That's tile a card. thing he's doing. Okay, cool, That's cool. a tile card he's doing. Yeah, I was having a lot of fun drawing that. <laughs> yeah. It, you'll know what I mean when um he puts the it up. video mm -hmm. comes out, yeah, yeah. On the 15th. Can't wait. This is going to be fun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But talking about collabs, there's one collab here that's kind of interesting and could be game changer. Hasbro's discussing a merger with Mattel again. Oh? So as you guys know, Hasbro is the toy conglomerate that... Yeah, and Mattel is like the uh, other toy company like um, Barbies that makes all the Barbies Hot Wheels. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I know. They're in talks to join together, a merger you would say... And it's going to be, well, interesting if they do join. As for now, we got no idea if they're going to do it or not. But looking at the talks, if they do agree, it's going to be interesting. Well, I'm not really, like, too interested in, like, the um, Hasbro aspect of the toys. Although, I will admit, I do collect my Little Pony products. Like, I have a an anime Equestria Girls um, vinyl scratch shirt. I've got a... Brony Lanyard, I've got a bunch of different um, 
Funko figures. I have all four princesses and whatnot. Yeah, but it will be interesting. It will be interesting to see because, as you may know, merger means two companies running together and yeah. probably working together to sell more product. But this is going to be one of those cases if they do merge, how are they going to sell the toys? Oh, the business aspects that they can go through that we really shouldn't care about, but we do for some reason. Well, because it's interesting, because when I go to a toy store, whenever I go to the pink aisle, I see Barbie and My Little Pony. And in my head, it goes like, hmm, there's a lot of Barbies, but nothing is pulling me or attracting me to them because, yeah, they have their market and it's not me. I'm just wondering, how are the sales doing, though? <laughs> when yeah. I see ponies, like... Hmm, how is Hasbro doing? I'm not gonna buy these toys because it's not attracting me. Ooh, the little, um, blind bags. Those I'm, those I'm interested in. But, oh my god, too expensive, not gonna buy. Yeah, I know the feeling. Then again, I kinda grew up on Barbies and whatnot because I was a girl. Yeah. Of course I grew up on Barbies. Yeah, I mean, every girl would have been. But now Equestria girls are out there, so a competitor probably. <laughs> yeah, they... Well, that's the news. Um, kind of a terrible segue in and out, but yeah, <laughs> I I'm not very good at the segues. I try. I it's try. okay. It's okay. It's okay, Norman. We love you for who you are. Yay! E. Enjoy, Norman. We love you so much. You're like a box of chocolates. He's also a sexy beast. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. That's you. That's usually my line. That's, <laughs> you're nicking my line, Sapphire. Hang on, right? I'm gonna say that line. I'm claiming it back. You're a sexy beast, Norman. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, you're the Mal- you're the Malaysian <laughs> pinup for 2016. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but interestingly enough, like Sapphire, like you're here because well, you're a review of one thing, but the way we know each other another story to itself basically what happened between us is i know i know i'm i don't know if i should do this but i'm going to do it anyway um basically how it met was i started watching the mbs show (laughs) i started commenting you started like replying to all my comments then I started, like, getting fascinated with the show and started watching a bunch of stuff, like, you know, how I like to binge watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started binge watching. And then I started, like, uh doing more frequent comments and whatever. We'd get into, like, YouTube conversations. Mm-hmm. Then I started, like, watching everything on the um, MBS uh, Twitter oh, okay. and Facebook and whatnot. I started, like, trying to promote that a bit. Thank you. Suddenly, like, you started, like, frequently replying to everything I said. So then I figured, you know what, what the hell, I'm going to look him up on Skype, and then I found you. And I didn't know if there was another Norman Sanzo, but it looked like you, because it had, like, that pony, so I clicked on it. How many Sanzos did you find? One, two, three, four, multiples? Probably, like, I don't know, two or three. Mm, Wow, okay. But, yeah, I figured I'd click on the one that looked like the pony. <laughs> and because that's, sent. like, yeah. And then it's like, okay, I think you're that guy. Please send me as a contact request. Yes, this is his, this is Sapphire Heart Song, blah, blah, blah. I am the greatest person ever. And then we started, like, talking and whatnot. And then suddenly, interview. This happened out of nowhere. Oh, true that, <laughs> because when... I was, you know, the YouTube replies, like I mentioned this on the show multiple times, I do read the comments and I try to reply when I can. If I am unable to reply, that means, well, it could be because the conversation has a really one-sided thing or you're not talking to me. So, yeah. or you're looking for a specific person, then I can't do anything about it. I'll just give a thumbs up, meaning, hey, thank you. But with you, we... You were talking, you were talking. I think the moment where I specifically remember um, talking to you or the conversation we had is for the review of the Hoofcliffs and McCults. Yeah, where I like paused the video like before I started watching it because 
I had like this one opinion about the Hupfields and McColts. Like when the first when the episode came out, a lot of people hated it. <laughs> like they either thought it was bland or just hated it. I just enjoyed the episode because it was stupid and fun. That and my dad has always told me like um you know, the stories of how we were apparently like distant relatives or we at least knew the McColts back during um the days when they were around because well we have like a place in West Virginia I think that's where it was placed I'm not an expert on the actual historical situation mm-hmm. but apparently we lived nearby like where they lived <laughs> like we have this one little area that we own that is nothing but farm and field minus every other animal except maybe a horse I do remember that conversation because... Because my dad actually watched the episode with me, and I had fun. Yeah, that and also the Hoofcliffe and McCall was based on the... I forgot the names. Hatfields and McCoys. Yeah, Hatfields and McCoys. And that did not turn out well. So when you said McCoys, that... what? I have, I have a strong feeling that I kept saying McCoys, like <laughs> when I was explaining the family history. For that, I apologize. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> like, But still... uh. That conversation went, wow, this, this is interesting. I want to know more. Oy. Still, thank you for watching us, even though that most of our review videos are half an hour long. It's okay. I, I don't mind. Like, when I'm, like, when I'm bored or whatever, I go to the MBS and just watch stuff and then skip over everybody but Silver Cole stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I see how it works. Mm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I enjoy everything. I watch everything. Uh, good to know, I think. Uh, but still, uh, from that point on, I, I at that point, I didn't knew you were a reviewer. I just saw, hey, this person has a pony icon like many others and, you know, just... I'm in Lightning Bliss's Rift Cafe thing, you peasants. How do you not know who the great and powerful Sapphire Heart Song is? <laughs> well, I don't go to those expensive places, and most I of our, and in most of our reviews are huh? well, even though we have silver on. You're not like too invested in the analysis community. It's all right. It's not that too, because in terms of reviewers and whatnot, I have to say that the MBS show reviewing is a bit out there in terms of how we operate. Because well, first things first, we are not a video podcaster. We yeah. don't we don't do videos. And second thing is our reviews can go for almost two hours long, depending on the episode and depending on oh, how yeah. s- strong we feel. So for that point, we're technically not in the camp, but people do like our conversation. So that's good yeah. to know. And I do understand that there's a Skype group dedicated to the reviewers. Ugh. <laughs> Uh... They actually no. You're well. You're right and wrong. There used to be. <laughs> there used to be. All right. The Rift know. Cafe. Mm. It has gone into a huge downfall. There's a lot of drama that goes on in there, and at mm. this point, it it it'll take in anybody nowadays. Oh well. Wow. Let me guess. The prices of coffee has increased exponentially. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, a cafe. I, when I first started getting into like the Rift Cafe, I was the waitress that replaced Keyframe. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, Keyframe and I have like this um little mini gag going on to where I am the blue universe and she's the red universe of ourselves. Ah, uh, all right. So when it comes to well collabs again, how do you get the guests? Well, I like knowing the person. Personally, first, before I, like, just go around, like, collabing with anybody. I was still surprised that, like, Silver wanted to work with me when I was, like, pitching the idea to, um, him. But, long story short, he had came to me, like, to, um, say some things one day on DeviantArt, which was a nice surprise, and then I suddenly became even more obsessed with Silver <laughs> By the way, Silver, you still need to feature that one piece of hippogriff art that I made for you. 
You, you know. said you said you would and stuff. <laughs> Give him time. Go back on that. <laughs> Give him time. I know he's slow. <laughs> oh yes. Anyway, um, I like to work with people I know. Like it's weird if like if somebody randomly on the internet asks you for a collab, like when they have nothing to show but they want to do it anyway, and if you in a collab with you without any work. Like, this is what everybody will say. It's better if you know the person instead of wanting to just collab for the sake of collab. Mm, true. And I do remember an article on Equestria Daily where Civil Quill and... Oh, I wish I remember the guy's name. A Bag of Vicodin? Yeah, Vic- a, ba- yeah a Bag of yeah. Vicodin. They kind of collab together and talk about yeah. how to start a review and collabing. Like, the first rule is... You don't collab first. Like, show what you're worth before collabing. Like, I even mentioned when I first, like, started talking with Silver, like, before I got into reviewing. Hey, I'm wanting to collab with you one day, but I want to make sure I get, like, some work out there first before I do that. If so, would you want to collab? Mm -hmm. Well, he probably forgot about me a month later and then... (laughs) When I message him again, like, hey, I have a channel. You should totally look at it. And then he oh. loves me for some reason. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is he be loves me so much that he calls me senpai, but that's only because the script told him to. <laughs> oh, wow. In, in, my, in my show's case, it's going to be a bit different. I do agree that you must know the person before, uh, what should we call this, before collabing. But with how I do things, it's much simpler. Like, we're talking right now. We're getting to know each other. We kind of know, it's fine. yeah. We know a bit more, and now I know that how you work and how your tempo is. And hey, since you're a reviewer, do you want to come on my review show and review something? <gasps> yes. <Yay. laughs> and my show is a bit loose. We don't have a script, but some people are turned off by that because. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I. When I do go on podcasts, I prefer without a script. Mm, true that, because, well, it sounds more natural, and you shoot from the hip, anything could happen. <laughs> anything. Yeah. And besides, anything. if I were to work off of a script, I'd be like, and then this and that, and blah, 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 blah. And then I'd have to, like, do the lines over and over again. Yeah, but for reviewing, that's a another story, because the more I think about it, like, the MBS show reviews is more like, it's more akin to the NBA show roundtable where we talk about set episode or stuff. Oh, another thing that I forgot to mention, like during the process of mm-hmm. the actual reviewing, the audio recording. Oh my goodness. When I am reading off of the script, especially if it's a long paragraph, I fumble around with my words. <laughs> like, I have moments where I will, like, be reading a long, long paragraph, and just when I'm about to reach it, I mess up a line. You know, my trick or my suggestion for you is pauses. Those awkward pauses, they actually help. Well, yeah, but sometimes I get, like, so invested in, like, the paragraph that Mm. I'm reading that I forget. It's a dumb, it's a dumb thing, but people say I'm awesome, but... When I get, like, the audio recording done, like, after an hour of reading six pages, (laughs) it's worth it. It... Oh, true. (laughs) I I do understand the feeling because uh, this show by itself, we we don't really go through skips. I'm sorry. We don't really go through scripts. But I notice where if I mess up a line that I'm talking, I tend to pause for a bit and try to take that line again. So... Well, like previously, if you heard, I mess up and I kind yeah. of pause and do it again because, well, I could do anything in post. <laughs> yeah, it's even worse when, like, you're in the middle of getting to that ending and then suddenly background noise happens. <laughs> I live in the suburbs, so there are lots of cars and there's even a friggin' train. Mm. So, yeah, scripting can be a bit... Oh, yes. Insufferable at points. <laughs> That's fun. Trains. Yeah, especially the train that, yeah. Oh, but still, but still. 
One thing I noticed, I mean, because uh, we talked about your reviews and your collaborations and whatnot, and the fact that, and the fact that you've done a bit of music as well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, have I brought up the the elephant in the room, or is this? <laughs> well, let's start out with the name that came that. Uh, <laughs> let's start out with the origins of my name before I get into that part. When I was younger, apparently. I had a good singing voice, like a really good singing voice. I embraced it. But on my mother's side of the family, my grandmother, who I mentioned before, her favorite is Pinkie Pie. Anyway, when she was around my age, she and my great aunt Karen would sing competitively. They would win, like, contests and whatnot because they were good singers. Although I personally beg to differ, but during my senior year in high school, I decided to, like, go into choir and whatnot. But during my life in, like, growing up, I've been told, like, I had a good singing voice and then I personally don't think I'm that good. But people tend to, like, drop their jaw for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I'm, like, stroking my ego a bit too much, but I personally don't believe what I'm saying. (laughs) Everybody has an ego. I just remember, like, when I was younger... Okay, you know how Fluttershy is in Philly Vanilli? That's me. Well, everybody has that. But I do like to do music covers every once in a while, just for the fun of it. Although I do get scared. Because music covers are music covers. If you're not good, people will give you flack about it. Oh, yeah, true that, true that. Then there are some people who are absolutely tone deaf that do it, that just, why? Why? (laughs) Well, they (laughs) will enjoy themselves. Yeah. They didn't be. But I don't know, with with covering a song and singing, I do like to do it, but I don't think I can post it up out there. Not because I'm bad. I think I'm decent, but the problem is copyright. (laughs) That and the difference between, like, doing a song cover for fun and doing it, like, professionally. Like, you know those anime artists that, um... Like, you know those anime song covers? Like, people will translate their own lyrics into English? And how they have to take, like, a bunch of, like, audio programs and whatnot in order to get it just right? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't do that. (laughs) I just wing it. Same here. I just... Listen to the track, find the lyrics, sing it, and then post it online if I can. But Although, if I ever wanted to do it professionally, yeah, no, that would take up more work than I need to. Uh, so, you, yeah. you need to find a song, you need to... Ah, uh, no. Umbrella hat you slide, it's raining, but you close it tight. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. The first time anybody has ever broken out into song oh, no, in their we... interview. Honestly, no, Luna Jax was around. He did that most of the time. And funny enough, he, <laughs> he pull, he sang the song for Cheers. Oh. Well, that's funny. I know. Considering my recent animatic. I know! That's it's like, hmm, this show and this, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> I raise my hand. Lots of cool things happen. Indeed, indeed. So I think that's all the questions I can ask and the one I can, well, think of right now. <laughs> Sorry for the lack of questions and stuff. No, because... no, it's fine. I enjoy it. Well, good to know. Yay. So anyway, thank you, Sci-Fi, for coming on. Uh, I wish I could have been a better host or, well, just been better. you're in... fine. You were a great host. Uh, you're just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you trying to be like Rarity? Darling, you're not doing it right. You're just saying that! You don't even like me! Wow, that's good. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm a very overdramatic person. It's kind of what I do. Uh, yay, but anyway. No! <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank you, Sapphire, for coming on, and well, I have to say it again because it's in the contract. I hope you had fun um, being on. 
I did. Hey, good to know. Anyway, um, if you guys out there have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. Sudibot will talk to you and we'll just interact with you guys for fun and whatnot and probably retweet the show because the show needs to be retweeted. Yes. <laughs> and yes, yes. you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I I am at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy nowadays is just food. I like to eat. <laughs> Kyle, what about you, man? Well, you can find me on facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall, where I post all the Brony Show stuff that I'm doing, both here at MBS and uh, Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, which you can watch on our YouTube channel, The Helm Bronies. Uh, we've got episodes up every Tuesday, and we're the season's going quite well, so feel free to just Chip in, have a wee nosy, see who we've got on next week. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Ah, good to know, good to know. By the way, Kyle, are you going to nick my guest for this week? Am I going to nick your guest? I might, well, I don't think you should ever nick someone as uh, as nice and as royal as someone as Sapphire Heart Song. I think you should never nick someone like that. You should politely request an engagement some point <laughs> in the near future. <laughs> well, that's not a oh, show you'll be Oh, what kind of engagement? Oh my. <laughs> oh, oh my. Uh, by the way, Sapphire, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on DeviantArt. Just look up Anime Christie. Also, look up on the YouTubes, Anime Christie. You can also look up Anime Christie on friggin' Twitter. I don't really have anything specific because I do what I want. That's not a word! <laughs> because why not? <laughs> oh, that's not a word. <laughs> of course it isn't. And you have a Facebook, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't really go on there. I post whatever I feel like, whenever I feel like. Ah, uh, alright. Because yeah. I'm Sapphire Heart Song. Dare to be different. Yay. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Uh, we kind of use it most of the time. <laughs> we try to. <laughs> And you can also catch us on PonyvilleLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So anyway, um, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Kyle McCall, a.k.a. Midnight Scribe. And I'm the queen of everything. And we'll, guys, catch you probably next week for another episode of the NBS show. And let's hope that Miss Sapphire Shores... Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Don't you dare compare me to that peasant. <laughs> Uh, I do not com- I am not a peasant. Wow. I rule the first year. You are all the lonely. How the shit did I mess that up? Mm. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. No, it's just keep like... Keep that, keep that. It's funny. Oh, uh, probably going to be in the bloopers. But anyway, uh, I hope that Miss Sapphire Heart Songs will join us in the future. We hope. I will. I plan to, but only if you ask me. Yes, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And we'll catch you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Sapphire, mind introducing what you do because we've been talking about the reviewing community and whatnot. So by now, I think everybody should know that. Give me a second. That's Ty and Dagger trying to get onto the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very yeah. much. Yeah, he's, he's knocking really hard. Let me on! Let me on! <laughs> Uh, that or that silver pole on my channel trying to break out of his cage. Wait, what? You have him in the cage? <laughs> I don't know. No wonder we couldn't I do a know. review show. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry about this. All right, okay. It's okay, it's right. okay. So, three, two, one. What? <laughs> to me or to the background? Uh, background, like, right. uh, sorry, my mom had suddenly come in, right, like, cool. asking me, it's like, mom, interview, go away! <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. I feel bad, I'm going to, I'm going to regret that later, because <laughs> mostly my snarky attitude and my egocentric personality comes from her, and she's meaner than me. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> like, you know how I'm the murderous yandere person? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, she's the one who kind of raised me to be that way, except <laughs> minus the actual murder. She's the person who taught me the snark, but also to be nice to people. Oh, wow. <laughs> she's she's the reason why I'm awesome. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so like what I was, was saying, I saying? Collapse. First one. Oh, right, collapse. Um.